Hello, this is my reflective blog. So it's an investigation within uh, art and design students, especially for further education. And um, this is within my subject specialism. And its context is vocational and uh, embraces making things. So using plastics, paint, uh, wood, plaster, gold leaf even. And yet within that making and, uh, and doing and physicality, it's also we'd like to consider uh, information communication technology, so ICT. So within all the practice that I've delivered, it has always been the aim to create inspiring and informative inclusive lessons. And in that consideration, I would like to examine how um, ICT or IT, how is that uh, effective within uh, arts education? I particularly like to look at uh, one particular professional standard as my own personal benchmark, which is of how to motivate and inspire learners and to promote achievement. I'm going to use uh, a model of reflection which helps us understand uh, and appreciate uh, and consider the, the educative forms that are used. This reflection is from Brookfield and it has of four levels. I particularly uh, look to this model of reflection because it is something that I've always considered within my own practice uh, and it seems more formalized uh, in this uh, focused way and looks at self student peer scholarship lens. So first of all I consider myself as a student and which I remember quite clearly. Uh, my school input within the arts was quite minimal. Uh, there was no real direction. The A-level standards were really good and I had great teachers, two teachers I remember very well. Uh, the foundation was also excellent and was like a recovery from previ previous years. Um, but there was no specific directed education in terms of myself as an individual, but collectively I benefited from that. The BA level was really quite bad. Uh, there was no direction, there was no uh, input, there were no real clear aims. Um, it, but there was very minimal um, input by staff in terms of program as well as say visiting lectures or anything like that. There was a little. The MA was really uh, great and amazing. It was a two year full time course and it helped me finally to arrive at the sense of here we are now here's a place where I can really learn from. <clears throat> it, there were different modules and, uh, and then the second year you were left to create something that you had investigated. Finally of interest is that I studied abroad within a Turkish uh, setup and that helps me see uh, an, almost like an Eastern setup of how things are taught and that's taught in a very pedagogical uh, format and yet it allowed you to finally understand uh, with depth and inquiry. The Students I've experienced teaching can be quite passive from their perspective. They're expecting to learn. They give some trust and you show some knowledge and experience and then they pursue that. Generally, I've always felt that the desire needs to be there within each student. And um, if that's not there, then it's going to be a very difficult uh, journey and it's a very difficult one for a tutor. I wouldn't particularly like students being in a place where they weren't interested in being. I, I want to teach people who have a desire to learn. Uh, one aspect I've enjoyed and realized is that I can teach through a different type of understanding where 
it's internalized within the student and then they finally understand so it's not from information led it's not outward knowledge it's like through the making the realization occurs teachers from this perspective I had at least five really great teachers not always art teachers three of them were and they were what I would consider super teachers and they were really great they're beyond um, the normal and they were dynamic they were informed they had a great breadth of understanding and they also had a very varied approach so that they were not all the same type of person and they um, were as I say interested and interesting and uh, they brought uh, that sort of dynamic to a class and it wasn't as it were a hidden curriculum it was um, just something that embraced life and it made the students emulate and want to inquire further and to take on what they were doing and to realize that there was a seriousness and a purposefulness within uh, their own work uh, uh, as a student regarding information technology they never used and it wasn't around at that time as it is today and it wasn't really of their consideration one in particular was wary of technology and uh, and in a sense i do take that approach so i see uh, information technology itself how is that i mean it is alluring it's seductive enticing and lots of people we can all realize that and take that on and and uh, there is a sort of wonder in it when it's used even using this type of uh, format um, and does it deliver well it can deliver it still can be passive it's one way and so on and so forth uh, however it doesn't seem to take on a depth within the fine arts within this creative uh, making and doing the fine arts in a sense touch on the senses the sight and the sound and the feeling and the being and so the platform of this type of technology can only go so far um, it is seductive it can work and yet sometimes it still does uh, create uh, uh, it falls down it doesn't always work it can get interrupted and um, I think it's a, a good icebreaker and yet it still can be superficial lots of the interesting apps that I uh, investigated for example to help within the arts and design they're interesting they're okay but at the end of the day it's artificial and it isn't the same as using real materials um, we can say that due to the difficulties that the world is experiencing and using information technology has helped in keeping classrooms and colleges together to a degree and it is to that degree but it's something that we've had to take on almost forced and yet without it we would have been in a very difficult situation so it has its uh, plus points whether it's to be then taken on even further and developed further it is another philosophical question I think in many ways um, it's advocated as bringing people together but I feel it atomizes and splits people so that they're not in a class dynamic they don't in, engage with their students and the way that they work there's less meeting it is very individualized um, the approach to this type of technology I would say is pyramidic in its worst sense so that uh, it is not um, it's a structural tool and governments may like it but it's not something that is natural and uh, promoting a natural type of life yes it is fun it can be 
but it's also been promoted as the answer to all problems and and new ways within education and I question that I feel that it is a linear outcome it's not rounded and uh, it's makes people as individuals introverted we can see that time is uh, so many students are online and that goes even further as young adults and if they're online using their computers 40 50 percent of their own time do they ever go outside do they climb a tree as it were do they realize the land and the world that they're that they are within this lesson through a computer it becomes an artificial uh, aesthetic and not something of truth and meaning the positive sides to that I've experienced as well is that it can have um, a greater number of students participating potentially within colleges you could have hundreds um, and even using say two cameras one showing a demonstration by a, a teacher and and being viewed there's still an awkwardness and also a clarity of vision that can't be taken on through the computer perhaps that will change in time and I've experienced that these are responses are still slower and it's still a, a basic thing it is a it's to just make a transition between something better than nothing but in the long term it, do, it doesn't step up to the high mark of true delivery within education and people can say well the students they are they are interested in this they they are used to these tools they like they understand the different platforms and the and the media and yet um, as I said it doesn't really touch the depths that I can get within a class dynamic Mayo Clinic says 13 17 year olds are 45 percent online constantly uh, it's seen as a positive thing but actually I think it's an indictment people and young people have to move away from these technologies they have to be more connected to the outside to the plants to the to the animals and the world that they're within and this is lessened and lessened and as we face a world situation in terms of ecology this uh, type of technology is detrimental and it still has its own sort of format we can see Facebook is very invasive um, and just the normal platforms word publisher PowerPoint and so on young people may not even be aware of how to use these uh, four platforms and so we shouldn't assume that though they are technologically competent on other aspects they may have no skill in and so my contemporaries and people around me Cox says teachers teach the way they were taught and I certainly take that on board um, I always refer to my teachers when I'm teaching classes and they constantly as it were remind me and the approaches that they took and I find that a good thing I must say that it becomes something of reclamation for myself I'm trying to retrieve the knowledges that could be lost and diluted over time so it's actually not um, one of outward innovation but of inward remembrance and bringing things together um, just a small point even Windows how it changes and the being used to the platforms and then changing to Windows 10 and then having to return to a very similar Windows 7 format because of the technology that was being just changed so that 
new packages could be could be purchased. Um, and Petty argues that the discovery of learning is a positive approach, and it's assumed that uh, information technology takes that same uh, learning, and yet I don't think that that is there. The the discovery of learning is something great and important within teaching. Uh, IT is just a, a, a platform and it doesn't really help discover true learning and true retention. It's a novel technology, not necessarily something that um, informs and um, admits to Petty's argument of discovery. Um, Bait argues again that using uh, information technology can raise motivation, raise enthusiasm. I think that's true to a degree. It, it can do. Uh, I don't think it can be used in a, in a long term. I think that people in the end will be less engaged as a class to whatever is being delivered. It is a tool as much as a, as much as a pencil. It can be used well, it can be enhanced, I'm sure it will be improved in time, but it still doesn't reach the levels that are needed within the criteria of creative making in whatever medium that might be. So the difficulty here, I can say, is in the specialism is centred on physical skills in real time, transmitted by teachers in a situational real time approach. And that's important and that's what needs to be remembered. And further, when a piece of work is made in whatever way, it has its own intrinsic quality and it's a journey to arrive there and, uh, and then to be shown. And that is to be considered and cannot be replicated through this uh, information technology medium. <clears throat> so the 13th uh, of the 20 professional standards is a good benchmark for me in terms of fine art produced and made and taught is through physical engagement, the use of real materials and so on. So it's necessary in those terms to um, test ourselves against the world and, and how we interact and, and what we and, and how we do. Technology helps and also hinders. And yes, these things are out there now. We can't necessarily ignore them or, or discard them. So the the only word that I can use is discrimination. We use it up to a point and we have to be careful that it doesn't take over our own uh, sense of self within the world and that it's used to enable certain things and then that's enough and otherwise you're going into a, a, a rabbit hole that you disappear from. We should be reminded of beauty in itself and recognize that when we meet that and that is something that artists call to and it's um, on a very deep level so that beauty is a transforming thing that is recognized actually by the heart and not the eye and therefore it confirms something greater and deeper as a, as humankind so one of my teachers he mentioned this in the in that we aren't on this linear onward outward path it's circular and cyclical and yet we return to origin so we're not looking to originality but to origin so that it's actually a remembrance of what's gone past and how to regain that so it's it's uh, actually going in the opposite direction which is something that the west does not always acknowledge or understand and that opposite direction is going to oneself. It's going to the inner core of a person so that they truly understand 
who they are and where they are and their own path and journey within that. And when that uh, journey can arrive to a source of origin, that then becomes a joy and a celebration. So we see that manifested in the great works that of, for example, a lifetime's experience, a lifetime's work, and then a realization and a creation of work that comes out of that. It's something to also take on and remember and bear in mind as we complete our journey. Thank you.